Hey everybody, welcome to the Q3 online event, which we're pushing to you via Teams live events. So this is the Cambridge Power Platform user group and welcome, I'm Sharon Sumner. Lovely to see you all. Um, and we are recording this session for those of you that couldn't make it. And I know several of you have been in touch to say that you couldn't. We're trying a different time slot because we want to do this slightly earlier for you. And we've got some international presenters. So it's going to be really nice to see some new faces to present to us and give us some information. Today's session is sponsored by Nigel Frank, who've provided us a couple of prizes for you later. Um, and we'll go through that shortly. So um, today's agenda bit of an introduction by me. Uh, so I'm Sharon Sumner, I didn't introduce myself. I assume you all know me by now. Um, so I'm a business applications MVP and a, an evangelist on all things Power Platform. And today we've got a competition that we, we're gonna show you to enter and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. We have the extremely charismatic Charles Sterling here to talk to us about the Power Platform. And we have a bit of a double feature from him with what's new in Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents. So we've got a lot of information to go through there from one of my favorite products group um, presenters. We've also got Greg Herman, who's coming to tell us more about custom components in Power Apps. So a really nice Power Apps focus there. And then to bring us to a close, we have Serge Luca, Dr. Flow, to talk to us about Power Automate and some of the fantastic stuff he's been doing here with his business process. So. At the end, we'll have some Q&A. As we go through the session, if you want to put questions in the Q&A section, please do. And what we'll do is we'll have one of the proctors either interrupt the speakers if it's relevant at that point in time, or we'll jump to the Q&A at the end. So we're giving away two prizes today. So we've got a link for you here and we've got a QR code. Now what's going to happen is during the presentations, you're looking out for three images. So each of the three presenters will have an image in their presentation. And what we're looking for is for you to use that image on the form and tell us what you saw. Uh, two lucky winners will be drawn tomorrow and we'll immediately send you those um, 50 pound Amazon vouchers courtesy of Nigel Frank. So please keep a look out for the QR code. So I'm going to hand over to Nigel Frank. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Sam Kay. I'm one of the management team at Nigel Frank International. I've been with the business for five years and I manage our Office 365 and Power Platform contract division. Um, for any of you that don't know who Nigel Frank are, it's the largest Microsoft recruitment agency in the world. Um, we've got We've been working for this business for over 14 years, specialising in placing professionals across the Microsoft stack with a particular focus on Azure, Dynamics, Microsoft SharePoint and more recently the Power Platform. Um, we've placed over 19,000 permanent and contract professionals with Microsoft customers, partners and ISVs across the world. Um, Globally, we have 500 recruitment consultants across the business, and that's spread across 17 global offices across Europe, North America, Asia Pacific. Um, and our global reach and, mo and focus on Microsoft products means that sorry, knowing the local Microsoft markets inside and out is what we are. Um, every year, we produce market reports that provide a snapshot into both the Azure and Dynamics ecosystems. These salaries are are crammed with lots of information of sort of insightful stuff and trends helping you to kind of find out what your skills are worth in the market. Um, we benchmark salaries and day rates across a variety of key roles, profile the most common work perks and also explore topics like certifications, work-life balance and also diversity. Uh, we've recently launched our latest white papers um, using our experience alongside insights from Microsoft MVPs to sort of plan our way through the next three to six months. Um, and you can access any of these reports directly from our website. Um, additionally, on top of that, um, there's some information or there's a, there's a scan code on the bottom of this slide, which you can access to that stuff from there as well. Um, and if anybody were to have any questions about Nigel Frank or about how we can help anybody that's looking for work, find work, or if you're in a position to be looking to try and actually hire any staff yourself, you can reach out to me on the email address at the bottom right hand corner of this slide and I'll be happy to help. Um, aside from that, I'm looking forward to hearing what Greg, Sergey, and Charles have got to show for us this afternoon. And thank you to Sharon for allowing Nigel Frank to sponsor the event. Thank you, Sam. Much appreciated. 
So our first speaker is Charles. He's going to tell us all about what's going on with Power Virtual Agents and Power Apps. I don't believe he needs much introduction, um, but I'm just going to hand straight over to you, Charles, so that you can begin your, your content. Outstanding. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. OK, guys, as Sharon was asking earlier, am I going to be talking about features that we're going to be shipping or actually things that we just shipped that are actionable? And actually, I've, I usually focus on the second set, things that are new, things that you should be taking advantage of and stuff that you can actually start interacting with right now. So with that, let's just go ahead and get started. Oh, by the way, most of these are actually announced at Build and the Applications Insights Summit. So uh, if you wanted to go back and look at hour long presentations on each of these features, um, that is available. If you haven't actually looked at any of the communities, if you go to power app or community.powerapps.com or community.powervirtualagents.com, you'll see that there's a gallery dedicated to just videos on these topics. Okay, so as I was saying to Sharon earlier, one of my favorite features that we have announced and we actually now have available is enabling you to go out and use the common data, uh, data service as a SQL Server endpoint, or basically use it as a SQL Server. Why is that exciting? Why, why would Chuck get excited about being able to use CDS as a, as a, you know, as a SQL Server? And the reason being is I am a Power BI guy. I love Power BI, oh, wrong Power BI report. And um, what this enables me to do is go out and create reports on direct query. That itself doesn't excite me, but the fact that now the data that I'm always looking at is live, um, and I can go out and interact with it in Power Apps being live. I don't, I don't have this disconnect. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how do you get started in actually going out and creating one of these new reports. So if I go ahead and go back into my browser, here it is, and I take a look at the um, environments themselves, you'll actually see that there is a setting for you to, uh, by the way, I'm going to be demoing a lot of these new features, so that's what we're doing now is demoing this. Um, go in the admin center, go to the environment that you actually want to play with, and I'm actually logged in as this person. And there is a setting that says that you want to go out and turn on, on the the TDS endpoint. Again, I think we should call it the the direct, the direct query feature, but that's okay. And in this case, I think we're actually using the premium. God, I oh here it is. This is the one. I'll just show you that this is actually the one that we had already turned on. And under features, um, no, no, under settings, here we go. Uh, then under features is that offer. And by the way, if I seem a little bit out of sorts, I've actually been out fishing on vacation for the last two weeks. So as I was saying that, I actually haven't even um, built a bot in two weeks. So it will be interesting to see if I can even just do that. Under features and Right here is that TDS endpoint. Um, while we're here, uh, I'll, I'll be talking about mixed reality, and you're going to want to turn on your um, um, geospatial, and you're going to want to go ahead and turn on your AI builder because we're gonna, actually going to be talking about that. Uh, the embed content is actually another feature that we're talking. I'm talking about, and that actually has to do with portals, where I can actually go out and embed that Power BI content in portals. Is actually what that feature does. So that's why they're all enabled. And what I can now do <clears throat> is and now that we've enabled that for the report, I can go into a Power BI desktop and go out and do get data and a SQL Server here. Yes, it is. And I believe the name of that CDS environment. Actually, let's go out and just grab it. It's, it was, I just opened it. It was. <clears throat> there it was. It was right there. Oh, you're going to make me log in again, are you? OK. And see if I can just copy this copy link and go back in here. I can just paste that in. I don't think I actually need this. Now, what you do need, however, is the port number. And if I'm not mistaken, it is 5558 is the port number for this. In this case, it's not. And this is that direct query. This is what actually is going to make that magic. So when I go out and do reports that have power apps on them, I actually see the same data that I'm actually looking at power apps as, as I am looking at with Power BI. So there's not this weird set of um, weird in, uh, latency where I update the data and I'm looking at a different data. And I'll show you some dashboards I've created or a dashboard I just recently created. Come on. 
sign in. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to show me all of my entities in my common data service that I can then interact with. In this case, I think I'm actually using the order entity um, or the devices entity probably from the, the app in a day and connect. Let's see if actually that works. And there we go. And request is unauthorized. OK, so I actually I obviously give it the wrong. I, the wrong information, but that's okay. Um, this is why we actually do these ahead of time because um, we can actually go out here and take a look at it already open and I already have those credentials in there. And this is actually, in this case, it's kind of hard to tell where the Power App even starts or, or ends, but this is actually all a um, Power BI with the exception of this little a narrow area here was the Power App. And I can go out and do filtering and I actually put a big gray bar on it so I can't see it. If I want to do an entry, um, you can actually see the Power App loading there. And you'll actually see if you haven't played with the new Power App visual, I've actually got a couple of videos on it. I can actually do filter context from Power BI back into Power Apps. So I don't know if you saw me click on one of these manufacturers. It's actually changing it down here inside of my Power App. And if I go ahead and hit entry, let's go ahead and say that um, uh, Greg, uh, actually I didn't have the name in there. I should have actually done the name, but then what this is actually asking for is the product. But let's say that Greg needs a new mouse and so I'm going to order a form. So I'm going to order a mouse and he wants one of those new high end roller mouses and I think they cost like 50 bucks. So if I go out and do that, by the way, when I hit enter here, I want you to notice that there are 17 orders and the total is 632 bucks because what should happen is, oh, I need to hit the submit button. This should actually change to 18 and actually should go up whatever that $58 was. And so this is a real time report. This is something that you can't do in Power BI, at least not really. Um, you can go out and set the setting where it pulls on a regular basis. And the reason being is inside of this checkbox, let's actually open that up and show you what that check that check is doing, is it's actually issuing a refresh back into Power BI to go out and say, I want you to look at that direct query data now. So I'm always looking at the right data. This is pretty cool. Again, it brings that common data service back in and letting it live or letting my Power Apps live in Power BI in a much more meaningful way. So that was actually the first one. Um, there is a entire session dedicated to just that, but that's how you get started with it. That's actually how you play with it. If there's any questions, I'm sure that um, my moderators are gonna let me know. But that's kind of what I wanted to tell you about it. Um, OK, uh, what's the next one? AI builder enhancements. So I love AI builder. I'm going out and democratizing and making it very, very easy to use AI in your applications. And uh, we actually went out and if you actually use forms processing, you can actually go out and select fields that weren't selected before. Um, that was one of the big challenges I had was the PDFs I used. It didn't actually see those and then you can actually now um, select those as if that you um, have, were using object detection. So um, I wasn't going to demo that, but um, Eliza out of New Zealand actually has a great video on that and we actually just did that in our last user group last week or two weeks ago for the Vancouver user group. Um, but what I wanted to go out and show was the new um, the the all the brand new built in uh, models and the new formulas themselves. So there's um, a couple new features there. Let's actually go out and see if I can't open up that application it is right. Oh, here it is probably the one that's called Chuck's AI application and actually start this. So what I've done here is that these are all pre built models that use these formulas. So let's go out and show you an example of one. So if I actually let's see if I can get my text in here and say that Sharon is a rock star. And what is that? If I just wait a second, um, come on. There we go. So that's positive. Now let's see if we can actually make it do things that aren't positive and see. Um, and I'll show you all that was required here. Come on, I want my text. There it is. Oh, I, come on mouse. I think it's because I've got these layered and it keeps thinking I'm clicking on this text box over here and don't want to click on that. There we go. It doesn't, doesn't want you to change it. It yeah. loves me. <laughs> but 
She makes me wake up too early. Okay. Negative. Oh, Sharon's now got a, ne a negative sentiment. Okay. So what was required to make that happen? How hard was that? That was literally AI builder dot analyze sentiment dot sentiment. That's that's all that's required to go out and do that. Okay. What's the next one? So there's a couple of these new pre-built models. Um, the entity extraction. Uh, entities actually are really, really important for power virtual agents. Uh, yeah, I definitely need one of those $50 mice without a doubt, without a doubt, MCG, uh, MCJ, um, positively agree. So if I want to go out and, I don't know, this is actually a bunch of stuff about me. Let's go out and uh, I happen to have some text here and we'll talk about what this is doing. So, Entity extraction will go out and take a look at known, I guess known entities is the word, and what it does is it actually puts them in a tabular format and then gives you the gives you the um, the value itself of it. So if I went out and typed in, I want an a black car that cost forty thousand dollars that was built in nineteen seventy eight. There's three entities there. Um, actually, there's a the color black. There's the cost. And then there's the fact that it was there was a date. So, and what it does is it gives me in a tabular format where I can actually go out and then put that into my database or do things like um, word cloud analysis on it. Again, remember I'm kind of a Power BI guy um, in the closet and after hours. And we can see that this gives me a number of 365. So, out of all of this, I, I chose poorly because it doesn't actually see other intimates or other entities. Um, but let's go on. So, and again, how, how did we actually get that one to work? Well, same as way before is I actually went out and I need to select that entire table. And by the way, if you start playing with these, I would actually go ahead and recommend using the table um, control to take a look at the data rather than actually trying to walk through because it, gi it gives you a table construct back or a table object, and it's the easiest way is just to throw it into a table control to take a look at all the properties, and then you can start dropping them into drop downs, et cetera. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, key phrase extraction, a lot like entities. Um, you can go out and see that it went out and pulled out these phrases from that text box. So if we go out and, and use that same text box uh, or same text as before, I can go out and when I hit enter, it's actually, come on. Oh, it actually already did it. I was going to say, why is it not doing it? It had actually already done it. So it had, didn't see an actually multiple words. Oh, no, it did. It actually open invite. Um, and this actually uses a set of uh, algorithms that we use in like SEO and says that this is actually the, the keywords and phrases that actually make up this block of text. Um, so again, the syntax is exactly the same as what it was before, which was I am just looking at not this phrase. I want the table and extract phrases, and I'm actually get, pulling back that that phrases table and passing it in as my table. So again, pretty easy stuff. By the way, if you want this application, um, me and Reza Durrani both put those into this Apple gallery in the community. So um, you can actually have those. And again, it's kind of a tutorial on how to use these pre-built models. I think I actually have one more. Is there one more? Oh, category classification. Yeah, so um, this is actually kind of hit or miss I have found. So what it says that Joe is a great AI. Uh, it's a compliment, and there's other types. There are um, service. There is, I, I think there's six of them, and I'd have to go back and, and look at it. what are the default um, default classifications. Um, technology is another one, but let's see if we can actually go out and, and put that text back in there. Come on. I want my mouse in here. Now what's going on with my mousey? Yeah. And we'll see what that block of text thinks it is. Um, 
OK, so uh, customer service is one of the types and you'll see that's not real bullish on the fact that it is less than 50 percent score that this is a customer service type. Um, but if you actually had blocks of text like um, um, a feedback form and you wanted to give it to the right group, you might go out and use this to go out and say, hey, this is about the service or this is actually a compliment that you might want to send to marketing and it automatically puts those into a category classification. Um, I think what I would probably do is actually use a not pre-built model where I actually go out and did my own categories and then trained it. And what am I talking about there? If I go out and take a look at like the ideas um, forum for ideas.powerups.com, we've got some of them around performance, around canvas and model, et cetera. I would actually train it using a block of text that I've already got those categories and then apply it to my um, uncategorized blocks of text to figure out which teams it should go to. So this is pretty cool if you want to actually put it um, text in categories for different groups. Um, but we also have something better which lets you train those to your own class, your own classifications or your own categories, I should say. Um, and I believe that is it. So that's actually the pre-built models in AI Builder that you can actually now use from the brand new formulas that we actually just released just before I went on vacation. I actually, I think the blog post went out while I was on vacation because I pushed it out while, um, just before I went out. So that's actually two of the areas I wanted to show you. Um, the other one, the testing and diagnostics is actually something that's been in private preview for a little while. You can go out and now monitor your applications, your Power Apps applications. So if you've ever used Fiddler, there is now a Fiddler monitor, if you will, built into Power Apps. And if you take a look at your application and the right at the top of them, you can go out and see this monitor one where I can go out and take a look at it. Um, very, very cool feature. The other ones is I can go out and automate things like pressing of buttons or setting variables. Again, very, very cool. Um, pretty easy to do. Um, the one that actually excites me the most, and I'll tell you why, is going out and actually integrating application insights back into your application itself. Why does that one excite me more than the other two? This one here, I know I need to know what I'm looking for. So this is a build experience or a design time uh, experience. Uh, same with this one is I actually need to know what I'm testing or I want to test. This one, when, when we're finished with it, um, we should actually implement all of the calls that you make, all of the actions, and you can actually see what people are doing. And the demo that I do actually goes out and layers on top of that because application insights Hopefully we'll have this where it'll be automatically implemented across everyone. You don't have to implement it right now in your on select for your button. You'd have to go out and do a trace to go out and say I click the button and maybe pass in the parameters. Um, we should finish that out where at some point in the not too distant future where all of your act actions are automatically registered and you can go out and see what are people doing with my application. In addition and what they've actually done in that video right there I saw. Um, is you can actually go out and even overlay that with send a smile. So if I have five pages in my power app and I see that people are using page two the most and I go out and do send a smile on all five pages and page three is actually got the lowest satisfaction. I know that people not only are they not using it, it makes them sad when they are. Um, and I can actually go out and show you how you, how you would do that. Let's go out and take a look at one of these applications I've got running. How about this? Where's that AI app? So if I wanted to go out and do a send a smile for this one, I could go out and say um, insert an icon and we'll actually go out and do where's my smiley faces. There's one. So I'm going to do a smiley face over here. And do I do an unhappy face? There we go, an unhappy face. And then people could go out and click on these. So I know that when they went and they navigated to this form, I saw an event. And then I could go out and let them go out and, and in the on select, go out. This mouse is just not, it's just fighting with me day and night. 
come on. Maybe if I select it over here. Icon. Wrong icon. Icon. There we go. OK. And on my on select, what I could do is go out and give this trace argument. And that's all that's required to actually. Oh, this didn't work out well at all. OK. Um, trace and go out and give this. I think what's happening here is it doesn't like all these quotes. I think uh, it broke it because of there, this was from a Word document. Um, I'm not going to debug this. Um, oh, I know what may be happening. In order to actually get application insights working in your application, um, what you need to do is implement it at the application level. So it's probably actually, if we go to the app, you'll see that one of the properties for the app itself is the instrumentation key. This needs to be set in order for you to do that. So how do you get an instrumentation key? What I did was I went over here into my Azure portal, and this does require you to have an Azure subscription. So, you know, you can get these for free. And then I went to overview, and I grab my instrumentation key for my application insights. Now, if I go back into my AI app and paste that in, I'm hoping that that is actually all that was required. Otherwise, it was those those damn smart quotes that broke me. And I think it was this one there. And it's still not happy. This is actually the right syntax. Um, I'm still going to try fixing it one more time. Now I'll just move on. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out and send this information of my username, my user email address, and the screen name. And in this case, it looks like I'm, I'm feeding back a, a negative one. Now, this should be fixed at some point where you don't have to actually put this in uh, quotes as this text string. You can actually pass it as a an integer. Uh, right now, you do have to pass these in as strings. So. There we go. It was actually it wanted it as two lines. So where were you, Greg? I thought Greg would have caught that for me. Um, anyways, <laughs> and now every time that someone clicks on this, not only do I get the data for my application insights uh, about the send a smile, I actually get like on navigate and on start. You can actually see some of that data here. You can see that my server response time for my power apps is this, my availability was that. And if I go out and take a look at uh, my log data, no, my metrics. Is it metrics? No, what am I doing? It was logs. Why am I not saying it? Events, not logs, it's events. Sorry, guys. And you can actually see that even though I haven't run this application, yeah, I can take a look at other applications I've run. Let's actually just see what I've run in the last 90 days. And you'll see that in this case, um, I've actually seen a bunch of different events that I can actually go out and take a look at um, and interact with and, and see that this is an on, on navigate, on chart, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is actually will show me what events, what people are doing in interaction. And also when you actually saw right off the bat that availability, I can actually go out ahead of time and see if I've actually got a slowdown and people are actually looking at applications that are causing them grief even before they call me. So if I go out and take a look at this, I can see that um, in my scatter plot, these are actually slower. So my Asia applications for this is taken twice as long as the ones from the West Coast. So there you go. Um, OK, this is actually more than half my time. I did want to spend some time walking through Power Virtual Agents. So let me just go through these fairly quickly. The other one, the big one that we announced was mixed reality. So not only just mixed reality where I can go out and do augmented, augmented um, images over top of where um, if I go out and take a look at an environment, I can actually go out and put my models in that environment and I can do things like measure it. Will it fit? What's it look like? So this is actually the shape and this is actually what's happening. Um, 
geospatial is also done by the same team. Uh, these are kind of hard to demo on a desktop. They actually demo much better on a mobile device, but I can go out and, and finish out like addresses. I know where you're at. I can go out and do things like rotation, etc. cetera. Um, the idea of having to decide whether or not you do a canvas versus a model application is going away, and these are coming together, making it much easier for you to go out and say, I'm creating an application and I have a model panel right here. Uh, Teams integration is a big one. Matter of fact, we are launching a private preview soon or yesterday. I it actually I think it's actually when it shipped. Um, as far as making it much easier for you to do Teams integration in a much more meaningful way, um, finding your applications, integrating the data itself, itself, etc. Um, if you if you looked at the uh, notifications, we now have a mobile player that actually will do both mobile or canvas and model driven applications. That's is already available. Uh, we're actually doing an advanced CDS offline version and we are actually going out and having um, a, a Teams mobile application. So you can actually run it directly from within your Teams mobile app. Uh, portals enhancements. This is actually what we just did in our last user group ourselves for Vancouver. We went out and took a look at the new themes, the Power BI integration that you saw me turn on. Um, it actually now in integrates in the, the one admin center, so there's not multiple places to do it. And you can actually go ahead and actually do authentication with multiple different data sources. Um, I know that I promise what's new and exciting for um, um, just Power Apps, but I think I'd be remiss in not talking about how the RPA, it, and portfolio for the Power Platform is increased substantially by the integration of Soft Emotive, and we can actually now do automation and application automation directly from the Power Platform. And this is actually something that you have access to as an RPA customer. If you have RPA, then you have access to this. Um, if you haven't used RPA in a day, I don't think Serge is going to cover that today, but he does, and Mariano has been doing it as well. The RPA, by the way, stands for Robotic Process Automation. We now actually have an RPA in a day that is now available. That actually, those links are available on the Flow blog, and it actually just, uh, Lynn did a great job of walking through um, how to get started with this, how to set it up, how to record it, how to do playback, how to modify those. Um, uh, what was it, back in April, I think it was. I actually helped release the Power Virtual Agents in a day. So if you if I don't get a lot of time to actually work with our Power Virtual Agents, um, you can actually go out and, and get a tutorial on how to actually use some of these advanced features itself. And some of the new modules that we've done for App in a Day include a COVID module itself. So if you wanted to play with a COVID application, that's in there as well. Here's the RPA in a Day agenda. And that brings me finally to, I won't even cover the Power BI stuff. Um, all uh, the new features for Power Virtual Agents. So since I've got about 12 minutes, I think, if I'm not mistaken, let's go ahead and actually build us a chat bot, and maybe I'll show you some of these that, if not, we'll actually go back and cover them. Okay, so back into my environment. If you haven't before, um, let's actually start from scratch. If I go to aka.ms forward slash try PVA, um, what you should see is a login, actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I don't know if I put that in the right spot, but there's the link for you guys. Um, now, for me, when I hit login, it's going to take me to my last chat bot. What you are going to see when you go to that link is you're going to see this dialogue. This is actually something that we just released last week where we can actually go out and now support six different languages. Um, it's more than six, it was six last time I looked. <laughs> and uh, I, I know that Polish is actually one of those because, oh, it's not even listed there, but it is actually one that, that um, Thomas has been playing with. He's actually been tweeting a heck out of it. He's actually been using it. But if I were to go ahead and give uh, my new uh, uh, chat bot a name, let's go ahead and say this is the, the the boat bot. So our mutual friend John Levesque just bought a boat and maybe he wants to find out more about boats or maybe he wants to share more information about boats. So I'm going to go ahead and choose English. 
And if I wanted to go out and change my environment, I could do that here. Now, um, I just want to, for a warning, the environment that you are would actually have selected, you'll see that I only saw a subset of my environments. It requires you to have a common data service. All of the topics and all of the interactions for my bots or my chat bots are actually stored in CDS is why we have to do that. So um, hopefully this won't take too long to start. If it does, I'll actually go back and use my Alex bot, whatever the heck my Alex bot was. We'll give this another couple minutes. And I think I still have about 10 minutes, uh, nine minutes. Is that right, Sam, uh, Sharon, Serge? Sharon unmuted herself, but she didn't say anything. Nine, nine minutes, I think. Nine okay, minutes. perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to give this another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven. All right. We'll go to the one that I've already got credited. So let's pretend this one said uh, boat bot here. Now, to get started with this, actually, is the thing that's under the bottom under experimental section? Yep, that makes sense. Um, what you would want to start with is you could customize your grading. So nothing wrong with starting with that. And this actually will let us go ahead and, and do that very low code. You know, we keep talking about, um, oh, it looks like I actually did this one for in Paraguay last. So I was actually typing in Spanish. So hello, I am your boat bot and I can help you with Now, that's what's going to happen every time you say the word hello. So if I go out and just say hello here, I should actually see those words come back. But what I want to do is actually may have an interaction. Um, uh, I need to save it. Um, have an interaction around boats. So I, I promised to help people with boat stuff. Maybe I should actually have a topic around that. So let's go ahead and have a, a my, go to my topics. And let's go to suggest topics. It's actually another new feature. And what I've done is I've actually opened up a boat FAQ. I've never actually looked at it. I don't know what's here. It looks like there's only three FAQs, but that's okay. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add that and say start. And while it's processing that, I'm gonna go ahead and say new topic. And this is suggested topics is them coming in and creating them for you. And this is me creating it manually, right? So you might actually have a Word document that has question and answers, etc. And I can go out and use those. Right now, it requires a URL endpoint. The feature that we're working on um, that should be available very, very soon is to um, go out and, and feed it a CDS entity. Um, the nice thing, and I'm glad that that's where the team started because I can actually push any data into a CDS entity using Power Query. I can grab it from SharePoint and grab it from uh, an Excel file. I can grab it again from a CSV file anywhere. Um, let's say that one of the first things that John had to figure out, John Levesque is our friend that just bought a boat, uh, is he didn't know what type of boat he wanted. So we go out and say type of boat. And the trigger phrase might be what type of boat should I get? Um, should I? And you get the idea, right? So this is actually, if, oh, no, 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 Z, oh, there we go. Um, uh, boat, I don't mean to do that capitalized, but you get the idea. Now, when people type in these, what what experience are they going to get? So let's go to the authoring canvas themselves and actually show you how to create that chatbot. Um, right off the bat would be, um, I can, oh, caps lock, I can help you with this. And then ask them a, a question is, Maybe the question is simple, something simple like, um, are you going to use your boat? Actually, yes, that's right. Yeah. 
And the choices might be salt what? And a new option. Oh, by the way, as I went this, I actually went out and, and put this in there. So when I go out and say fresh water, you can actually see that it's actually populating that for me. And in this case, we'll make it pretty simple since I only got about five more minutes. And let's go out and just show a message. Say, um, you should check out, um, I don't know, maybe a video. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash MS Power Plot. And for this one, maybe go out and show a message that says, uh, check out HPS Sterling's dot life, something like this. Okay. Now, I didn't say that before, and we saw the wrong, um, the wrong greeting, but let's go ahead and run this now. So if I go out and say hello, yeah. hopefully we'll actually see you. Hello, I'm your chat, your boat bot. There you go. So this is your boat bot. And what can I help you with today? And you also see that it's actually walking through where we're at in these topics. Um, should I get a fiberglass? That was one of those. And by the way, I don't know if I use the exact same syntax, but you don't need to. It actually is going to go out and do not just fuzzy matching, but use um, artificial intelligence to go out and do things. Matter of fact, it even does things like uh, does stuff like colloquialisms and slang. Um, so in this case, it now is is asking about um, where are we at. So if I go out and click on salt water, you actually will see that it's going to take us to that topic, and we are in this branch here, and it says you should check out this this um, platform. Now, I don't know if you saw, but when I was actually creating these questions, um, I can go ahead and use those entities. Remember when we talked about entities? These are entities that are pre-built into Power Virtual Agents. Um, remember from the AI model? And then in addition, I can even go out and do things like use variables and as I was telling Sharon, we just uh, released the fact that I can actually populate some of this information about like salt water as a variable when we come in by using a query string. So this lets me interact with it from my power virtual agents or my portal or my even my, you know, my high code application that I've done in um, uh, maybe something like ASP.NET. Now let's go ahead and publish this and make this available. Yes, so we'll make that available and publish it. Now, if I want to actually put it in a website or put it into a Canvas app, um, there are a bunch of different channels that we make this easier for you. Um, I find that I often will go back into this, uh, this custom website because what it does is it actually gives me the iframes code already. Um, in this case, for this, um, you might want to go out and take a look at the URL that's there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and make that URL an announcement. And if I click on it one more time, copy that, which I did, and go to a new tab, I should actually see my boat botch um, already running. And you guys can go out and actually look at those, you know, that one topic that I've done. You, while I didn't do a whole lot of interactions and it, it actually should give you the idea that oh what I didn't show I'm trying sorry I didn't mean to interrupt myself but I actually fed it those suggested topics a while back by the way I can actually create my own entities so I'm, these are the entities but under topics and under suggested topics um oh it looks oh I you know there are areas I probably didn't finish the other one I have topics that were started. Hmm. It must have still been processing. Um, what I've expected to see is a list of topics that uh, came in from this um, page right here and listed out here as topics that are turned off. So everything that was on that page should have actually been listed down here as topics I could go out and turn on, but they're turned off. 
And this actually lets me go out and actually populate those topics much, much faster. So I'm at the top of the hour, guys. Um, I wanted to make sure and hand off that my baton to the next speaker. So Sharon, back to you. Thank you very much for inviting me. And thank you for very much for actually letting me present at your user group. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, as always, at speed, really informative, loads of stuff to see. Absolutely love all of the um, the new sentiment analysis um, stuff. And coming from an SEO background myself, definitely won't be copying competitors' websites and working out what their keywords are. Um, you know, loads of fantastic stuff in there. And, and there's loads more stuff coming around PVA. We've had a play and I should be doing some videos and some blogging over the next couple of months on PVA because it really is um, a really great tool. And it is, it's got more business value to it than it first seems. It's not just about customer support or support tickets. Um, because we can push that public and that can go on a live website, we can have any kind of interaction with that that, that we need. So there's loads of possibilities there. And if anybody's got any um, suggestions of how they might be using those bots internally, externally, I'd love to hear them. and I'd love to showcase your examples on the user group next time if you're happy to come up and speak. If not, send them to me and I'll always, I'll always speak for you. But really would like to see some community examples of how that PVA stuff is coming together. That'd be really great.